I'm in China and I am at the Awa factory. We are getting all set up right now so we can all build the Z2A first and then the Z3 from scratch, start to finish. There's all the parts right here. They've got their guard dog right here, making sure everybody stays focused and not distracted. We did start with a brake test to see how strong the swivel was and the upper eye from a unit that was beat up from another customer. So it was a good test unit. But I wanted to come here to meet the AWA team because I have been talking to them for years and we are the distributor in the North America, Australia, New Zealand for Z3s, Z2s, and all the other new stuff they've got coming out that I can't show you. When I say we are going to assemble things, it's not me and this puppy. I brought Chase, my engineer. What are you about to do? About to install the flat key into the spindle. I gave the flat key a whack and it was still sticking up too much. Then I found tiny taps were better than smashing it. Yeah, found a way? Found a way. Yeah. <laughs> less, less muscle, more brain. This is like a video game. Now to the next level. So line it up. Don't mess up. And straight. Okay, straight. Step two is to do it right. And then close your eyes and hope for the best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Is this the fancy version? Yep. More automatic. Looks good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, perfect. They're all made here. I'd like a pair. <laughs> Safety glasses. <laughs> Love them. This and this and then putting on. Ready? It's complicated. Pay attention. Did you blink? Because it's over. Hold it in place. Put your fingers under a machine that's spinning and then push it down next to your fingers. What could go wrong? Check it even. It spins. Put it in the box. If you look real carefully, there's a hole right here. And this is like one of those puzzles that you play at camp. And then there's another hole over here that is just as awkward to get the spring into. You have to stick your tongue out just right. A few moments later. It's easier when you're not explaining or performing like a monkey. You smashy, smashy. Juicy. Put the spring on the silver, and then there's a corresponding cutout on this end for the other part of the spring. Rivet goes in the hole, and we'll go over to the riveting machine after. So this is the replaceable wear part, and this is the key, so it just slips in. It's not a, a tight fit. I'm not smashing things together. I put it in the part that you put in. It's where you put your drill. Take this ring. We're on top. Take this bullet thing, and you smash it down. After this part's pushed down, take that head and squeeze like that. And this machine gives a whole new meaning to laser printing. We help design the back panel and what it says. This is the back of the unit and this pen goes in that hole. Push it down real good. Round things, going round holes. It has this so it doesn't get scratched. I thought I did that chapter of my life. And now to install the sound maker. Next, this piece goes in. Oh, is that the lever? Ah. The very important. Oh, okay. Don't forget. Don't forget. Okay. And then I was supposed to take some goop in a jar and grease up the inside wheels without getting it all over the place. Then the inspector came by and checked my work. So putting on the back plate, we're going to insert into this hole, check it. We wanna make sure it goes all the way down so those are flush. Once we know that's good, we're gonna take it back out, flip it around the correct way, and then insert on there. And we are back to the smashing machine. And press down. Make sure that it's tight all the way around. The next thing was to lock tight the friction arms, the things that help give you friction when you open those gears up. And a new feature on the Z2A is it's got this spring ball to hold the door open while you're trying to get the rope in. And then the nub, that is the catch for the door, gets screwed in also with Loctite. And then lastly, we put in yet another nub that is the rope guide. Voila. Magic. Next step. <laughs> 
So now we have to screw the back together. You touch the Loctite together and you make sure that you're not going to cross thread things. Now this part is easy. You take this pen, except this is the wrong pen because you just take this pen because it looks just like it. You take the thin washer, not the thick washer. There's a 0.5 millimeter difference. And I forgot the roller bearings. You smashy, smashy. You twisty, twisty. Wipey, wipey. The next pin, which requires this little baggie of don't drop any's, and you put this 0.3 millimeter washer on there. No problem. Then you take the 1.5, and you put the roller bearing, and then you take a 1.5, and then you put this in here, and you make sure that the door is not closed, or you will smash it, and you can't move it. Will it close? We will rivet this in a minute. So I actually find this part to be the most interesting because I've seen swivels before, but I, I've seen the head before, but I didn't know that it was a screw. And so you have two brass washers, two nylon washers, and it's gonna go in here. And this is familiar to me, but this, this is pretty cool. The base of it is threads, but you can see the little hole. And so they drill through that screw in order to keep it from coming out. But this screw is really burly, and that is why when we do tests, that it always breaks right here in the swivel head. I'm so stressed right now, because I have to not miss the back of this thing. Here we go. Must be flat. Must be good. Oh my God. You have to do it confidently. So it's nighttime and all the skilled labor left, so all we're left with is, uh, it's me here. This is hard. It locks open. Oh, heck of that out. It's really hard to tell until you just push the foot pedal. That's good. That's tough. Yeah. That's tough. Does it make you nervous that 100,000 people just watched you do that? <laughs> yeah, we're good. This is the handle. This is the spout. And now I need to oil it all about. Pay attention now. That hole is different than that hole. Yeah, right there. Perfect. Three pounds of Loctite. We literally can't get more on there. Mm -hmm. So now, I turn this around yes. all the way. You put that in there and it stays. This is the part you put in your drill. The drill has this gear right here. Could not believe how much grease he just put on this. And I'm gonna put this in here and now I just gotta screw that down. Still works. Feels like a Z2A. I think we're missing uh, this part. So this is a new wheel. It's still for this particular one is 10 and 11 mil. But this is cool because sometimes the rope would get sucked underneath this middle part. One, it can be removed. And two, uh, I don't even think the rope could go in there now. But to put this on, uh, this wheel comes on and off the shaft like the Z3s. That's a cool thing. Did we do it? Did we just make a Z2 okay? Is it done? Very good. So let's go test it. Wow, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of cool to make one. 285, yeah, wow. I like that, they, they put a soft good in the eye instead of the carabiner so it doesn't uh, get scratched. Wow, we've been pressing and squeezing things all day and I finally get to lift something. I think that's like 600,000. Wow, I made a Z2A. That's pretty cool. Then the next day we went over at NTR's Rope Factory, which is a more established business and you can tell because oh, yeah. their guard dog oh, is yeah. bigger. But we got to learn how ropes were made. This was the first time I ever got to go to a rope factory. And it was neat to see how they would take the threads and put it on their bobbins, then twist those threads onto other bobbins and then spin those bobbins around to make rope. Then we went over to the webbing machine and it was moving so fast that we had to use the slow-mo to see how it worked. But the reason we went over there was to do drop tests in order to see if we can pass these certifications for the Z3, which we are currently working on. 
We did one test where it only had to drop a little bit, and it did fine. Is that good? Safety glasses. <laughs> then we did a more aggressive test, and I wasn't prepared for how loud it would be. Oh, that was so loud. The stitching broke <laughs> on the orange sling. And that one was inconclusive because the eye-to-eye -eye sling they attached it with broke. But the Z3 was fine, which was good news. After drop testing a Z3, it was time to make a Z3. And it was a lot more bop it, squish it, twist it, and turn it. But what makes a Z3 different is that it is waterproof, and that is why we have the rubber gasket that we put on there and the other gaskets. And it also has a redundant catch in case the pawl fails, that something else will stop you from falling, which is why we can even attempt to certify this thing. 90% of what we do is just putting shafts into holes, which I guess is not that And then smashing them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> how this... Fan. This is how the sausage is made. And the Z3 gives a smoother descent because instead of a free spinning wheel with friction arms, it uses the wheel as a camming unit against some roller bearings. And then I do my final QC check. It's anticlimactic, <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> so the original Z3 would slip on 11 millimeter wheels and Chase spent basically months trying to figure out what wheel in shape and size would work on 11 millimeter ropes. At the same time, Awa was testing dozens of other kinds of wheels, which is nice, because I was curious if other shapes would work better. And it ended up being that Chase's wheel one. And so now we have 11 millimeter wheels available on Z3s that work for 11 millimeter ropes and 10 millimeter wheels that work on 10.5 or 10 millimeter ropes. So we have helped solve that problem. By the time I hit publish on this video, the boat that has all my Z2As just landed in LA. So it'll be a couple days before we get them. And they go for 10 or 11 millimeter ropes because the wheel only has to spin one way, but there's enough space there that we can develop a wheel for half inch ropes if arborists would like to have a Z2A work on half inch ropes. If we get enough interest in that, we will design it and pay for the mold and make that happen. Another development that's happened for over a year is that the wheel is replaceable. This was Line Grips, the European distributor's idea. And then we whispered in Awa's ear until we got it in full production to where you can unscrew the wheel. You wanna change it for a different rope or it wears out and you can easily lift it off and put it back on. And I know that sounds simple, but that took a year to make happen. We are the official distributors for US, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. And we do have some retail partners, but I wanna be very clear that Awa store is not a legitimate site. It is not AWA. We will not service, Europe. European distributor will not service anything that comes out of that store. And Skyward Supplies is also has gray market units. I don't know where they get them. We cannot touch things that did not come to our fingers for liability purposes. So please buy authorized units from either us or our retail partners, which will be very clear who that is. And then we can help you with anything that happens to your unit or provide you with spare wheels. Now, we were able to interview the inventor of the drill powered pulley, because this is a pretty unique product to have something that goes on your body, isn't this big, and a drill powers it. This is the inventor of the Z2 and Z3. What industry did you work in before you started AWA? Uh, how long ago did you create the Z2? When did you sell the first Z2? What is your goal for AWA? Uh, I like that. How many products are you making right now that are new? Oh, too There are 50 to 60 products are in his mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of AWA. <laughs> How big is the AWA team right now? Wow. Oh, because you have a new factory. Yes. The products are very impressive. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>